Welcome to the Nature Photo Guys podcast, where we talk about nature photography, from gear to our philosophies and everything in between. So grab a cup of coffee, sit back and relax. You're listening to Joe DeJardin and Chris Gibbs, the Nature Photo Guys. Welcome back, everybody, to this week's uh, podcast. Um, this week, we're going to talk about uh, some of our favorite accessories. But first, we're going to get to some questions uh, from our listeners. Yeah, so Ben from the UK is asking us another question, our friend in the UK there, Joe. Cool. What's yeah, he so, got? so yeah, he's basically asking, uh, we've talked a lot about um, the fact that you're a Lumix storyteller. So he just wants to know mm-hmm. a little bit more of what that means. Okay, um, well, um, long story short, um, uh, Lumix storytellers are basically a, a Lumix global community uh, where there's a bunch of us uh, shooters that use uh, Lumix gear. Uh, we share stories, we share images, uh, we share the gear we use and, and how we use it. And um, we'll, uh, we'll answer any questions that, um, uh, you know, any of the um, followers may have. Um, it's a pretty cool site. It's Lumix, Lumix Stories. .ca. So L-U-M-I-X stories.ca. If you want to check out who all the, the storytellers are and see some of their photography. Nice. And then uh, he's also got a question regarding zoos. Is it a good way to gain experience taking photos at the zoos? You know, I did do some quote unquote zoo photography way back in the day, but it was only more to, to teach myself, right? You know, um, it was, um, you know, learning, uh, say single auto point focus, or just even learning to focus manually when I was using slide film, you know, um, yeah. you, you know, just learning exposure, that sort of thing. But the biggest thing with shooting in zoos, making sure that the public is aware that it was shot in the zoo, that it was a captive like, animal. Like when you're okay. posting on social media or something like that. Exactly. And, 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 and don't pawn it off as a, um, you know, something, an animal in the wild, right? I mean, I think that's the worst thing you can do. So, you know, a couple of suggestions. Um, when you put your, your watermark on the image, put maybe CA after it for captive animal. And if you're posting to social media, you know, maybe use hashtag zoo or hashtag captive animal or, you know, so something to let the, the, the public know. Because, um, you know, I, I think it's, it's um, how do I say that, um, dishonest, you know, posing as, you know, posing your, your photo as a wild animal and it isn't. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I used to take photos of at the zoo many, many times back in, you know, five, six years ago. And uh, I provided them to the zoo. I took photos at the zoo, learning, you know, different things. Um, provided them to the zoo, they use them all over the website. And, um, you know, if everybody does that, if you are going to sell them as artwork, um, make sure that people know that these are zoo animals and you, you need to yeah. get permission from the zoos to do that. Uh, for example, I've taken photos of the Calgary Zoo. I've provided them uh, information that here's the photos I've taken. Are you okay if I sell these as artwork? And they basically said, yeah, absolutely. You can sell them as artwork. We've given you permission to do that, but you need to get permission before you do that. And when I'm you know, at a, at a fair or whatever selling my artwork, I make sure that, oh, where did you take a picture of that owl? Oh, that picture for your, just so you're aware, I did take that at the Calgary Zoo. Um, I provided them the photos and they've provided yeah. me authorization to sell them as artwork. So like you said, just be honest, right? Basically what you're saying though too is check with your local zoo. See what kind of rights you Absolutely. do have with those images. Okay. See if the, the, the zoo will actually purchase those images uh, for use. Um, or if you take them for the zoo, what rights do you have Um um, outside the zoo, right? Yeah. So, Don't just assume I, that sure. taking the photos that you that they're your exactly. photos, you're on private property, right? So that's right. That's right. So just make sure you know. Just check with, uh, um, you know, management and, and see what kind of rights you do have for sure. Exactly. And he he also says, just so you're aware, Joe uh, Ben says he loves that you're uh, you know a coffee drinking knee pad wearing man. So <laughs> <laughs> thought that was neat. that's <laughs> awesome. That's actually going to be part of uh, today's uh, podcast. So that's cool. Yeah, accessories. Yeah, there we go. Um, and then we got a, we got a uh, message from Andy from Okotoks, and his his question is, um, how do you make sharp images from about twenty meters away and create you know the fuzzy blurry background? He's asking. 
Okay, so um, it's not necessarily how far the subject away uh, is away from you, but uh, a couple of things. Uh, what aperture you're using? Okay, so whether you're shooting wide open or the the largest aperture possible, which depending on the lens you have can be, you know, say f two point eight to say five point six. But the critical right, thing yeah. is um, is the, the subject to background distance. It doesn't matter if you're shooting wide open and the subject is a foot behind you or the, or the background is a foot behind you. Um, you're still going to get a sharp background. So if you can position yourself so that you have, um, you know, uh, the animal uh, further away from the background, then you're going to get that nice, soft, um, out of focus background. So exactly. Yeah. Don't expect to get that with a bear in the tree kind of thing. That's right. Exactly. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So you really got to pay attention to the back. Backgrounds are everything in wildlife photography. Um, you know, if you take a look at our feeds and, and take a look at our, uh, our Instagram accounts and, and Facebook, you'll see that um, backgrounds have been really paid attention to when taking photos. Um, you don't have obvious highlights. You don't have, you know, a tree, say, growing out of the head of a grizzly bear, you know, that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, yeah I, I stress that yeah, too, to a lot of people pay attention right like if if you realize if you look look behind the background if there is that that's you know tree or a post sticking out of the head of an animal or whatever yeah. step the foot to the left or the right or whatever right that's right don't think oh i'll take it out in photoshop <laughs> that's yeah that's the no. worst thing you can do so much time wasted doing that sort of thing so absolutely so and andy also said your podcast makes me want to pull my equipment out again and he hasn't used it forever so that's pretty cool Oh, that's awesome that we're reaching our, um, yeah, our audience like that. Cool. Absolutely. Yeah. Inspiring people. So that's for sure. That's awesome. So uh, today's podcast, some of our favorite accessories. Um, yeah. Why don't you go first? Let's just jump right into this. You know, you know, right. yep. why, why don't you give me one, one of your favorite accessories that you take in the field? Sure. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm a big fan of long exposure photography, so you can't live without my neutral density filters, right? So, yeah. um, used the screw on filters a bit in the past and constantly got frustrated with unscrewing them, screwing them on, especially depending yeah, you know, exactly. if it's a 10 stop neutral density filter, it's pretty much black, right? So you, you got to set it up first and screw it on. Be careful. You're not playing with the focus and all that kind of stuff. Right. That's um, right. That's right. So, yeah. so I ended up purchasing um, the leaf filter system. I know they have new ones now, but this one I purchased about three years ago. Um, mm -hmm. And it's uh, basically a foundation holder system and fits a hundred millimeter uh, drop-in filters. So they're square or yeah, rectangular, yeah. I guess, if they're, if they're gradual filters, as you know, right? So, Grad, yeah. um, uh, so basically, uh, and I have the uh, 105 mil uh, polarizer on the front of it. So okay. uh, it's, I pretty much leave that polarizer connected to it when I do long exposures. Uh, if, if I don't need it and if it's going to cause, because it technically does add, you know, um, one and two thirds stops about with the polarizer filter on it as it is. Um, it, uh, it takes about one and two thirds stop of light away. It does. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's right. what I'm Sorry. Yeah. So, yeah. so if it's too, if it's that extra stop that I, I don't need, I, I do take it off, but most of the time I leave it on entirely. Um, yeah. but yeah, no, I, I love my, uh, the leaf filter system. I love being able to drop the filters in, pull them out. Um, yeah, I use it all the time for all my long exposure photography. So, so basically you leave the polarizer on because whether it's going to work or not, you're still going to, uh, get some light loss, which is what you want for long exposures. Exactly. So really you're keeping it on as an ND, but if you happen to be 90 degrees to the sun and you can use the polarization to your advantage, I'll it's use there it. anyways. Yeah, exactly. Right. And then this way I don't have to, okay, cool. like, it's kind of a pain, pain in the ass to unscrew it and screw it back on. Right. Kind of thing. So no, I hear you. What about you? Cool. Well, guess what? <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> My I know number one about. accessory knee pads. <laughs> so I'm not going to say much about these. Um, I mean, you can pick them up very uh, inexpensively. Um, you know, uh, anywhere from the dollar store to, you know, home Depot. Right. Yeah. But, I do not leave home without these. Basically, when I get out of the car, they're put on and they don't come off till I'm home. Yeah, nice. There's nothing better or there's nothing worse than, you know, coming up to a subject and you're trying to get a different point of view and there's rocks and mud and everything else. And you go to kneel down into that, you know, 
hurting the knees, getting dirty, ripping clothes, whatever, right? So I put those on. I don't even think twice of getting a different point of view, right? I just, I get yeah. down on my knees and I'm able to shoot, uh, get up, uh, lean on rocks, you know, um, even just to kneel down and take a break, you know, sitting back on my heels. It, it works great. So sure. I would say this is my number one. Is, that's your number one uh, yeah. knee pads that's my number one that's, right, become, cool. that's become what's next that's become part of you that's no accessory that's attached to you <laughs> that's right knee pads and coffee yeah, <laughs> yeah. there you go uh, i guess my, my number two accessory should be a thermos right but, hey, but yeah it's not, it's not okay. no no no, that, no, no. that's, a, that's okay, an additional go. bonus item so <laughs> that's just that's expected. Right. So, no, no, that's not <laughs> that's right that's right <laughs> So uh, what's number two for you? Yeah, my, my number two is a, a Pelican uh, memory card case. So oh, yeah, uh, cool. yeah, so this case basically holds uh, 12 SD cards. I kind of have mm -hmm. a system. Um, you know, if I, if I go shoot something, I don't, sometimes I don't leave that card in all day. And as you know, I shoot video as well. So they fill up yeah. like fastly at, at times. So I have a bit of a system where, you know, if I pull the card out, and I put it in an empty slot. I put it backwards. I don't know if you do the same thing or not, but this I way do exactly, I know that exactly the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, hey, maybe I learned yeah, from you this. over the years, exactly. right? So, um, but that's basically <laughs> I know that this is an empty card, and and the, yeah. the one turned around backwards is is a full card. So I know not yeah. to grab that one and shoot with it because it's either full or I don't, you know, I don't want to touch it. But it, it's Pelican case. It's waterproof. It's 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 hard. So uh, if I step yeah. on it, they're all protected in there, and that's the one thing. All my memory cards aren't just lying around in my bag. They're all in one spot. Although if I lose this, I'm in big trouble, but, uh, uh, but they're all yeah, in one yeah. spot. I know exactly where they are. Yeah, cool. Well, this isn't my number two, but I use the Pixel Pocket, okay, from Think okay. Tank. Yeah. And, and it's something that unfolds. Um, there's no rigid case or anything. It's all fabric, right? Okay. But I do the same thing. Uh, once I'm done using the card, it goes in backwards and upside down, right? So I know it's it's... It's been used, yeah. But it's got like a lanyard on it, so oh, it's yeah. actually attached to my belt, uh, my belt loop. Oh, nice! At all times, okay. Yeah. At all times, so uh, there's no chance of it falling out of my pocket. So that's just kind of an aside to what you said. It's not my number yeah. two, but just kind of an add-on to yours. No, absolutely, yeah, for sure. So what's your okay? Uh, so my there? number two, yeah, Leatherman tool. This is always, Lanyard, always, yeah. always, yeah, <laughs> always in my camera bag. <laughs> And the biggest reason is this. Now, I mean, obviously there's a lot of cool gadgets. There's a knife, there's pliers, there's, you know, um, I don't know. There's all kind of bottle opener, that sort of thing, uh, wire yeah. cutters. But the biggest thing for me is this bit holder here. I hope you guys can see that okay. And the reason I say that is I've got what's called a bit kit. Okay. And okay. it comes with, I think it was about 40 bits, right? I think it says, you see, it comes yep. with about 40 bits. And I have everything in this kit to um, dismantle camera gear, um, tripods, heads, any and all things related to photography. And I actually have nice. my, my Allen key head uh, for my, my tripod um, as my default you know, okay. uh, for yep. taking ball heads off and that sort of thing. So um, <clears throat> that's, that's the biggest reason why I have this. But um, this came in handy a couple weekends ago when I was in Waterton. We had a, a car full of kids that um, the car died. Okay. Okay. And, oh, yeah, this was right on the Red Rock Canyon Road. And um, I tried boosting them. And the vehicle would start, but yeah. it wouldn't hold a charge. So I, you know, I, I took a, uh, a closer look and I noticed that the battery terminal was, was white. So basically oh, no. it was corroded beyond corrosion. Right? right. Okay. So I took, I used my Leatherman tool to, to undo the, um, uh, the, the terminal. Um, yep. I took the file that comes with the kit. Okay. And I filed okay. the entire terminal, uh, the battery post, everything. I got it back to what it's supposed to look like, attached it. And then they just start the car up, off they went. Are so it was serious? a bad connection. <laughs> so, oh, I'm serious, man. I'm serious. So the Leatherman tool saved the day. Like, nice. so, I mean, it's, the possibilities are endless. And the one I use right now, it's called the Leatherman Skeletool. But 
I mean, they've got such a variety of tools. It's, it's crazy, right? I know you just ordered one, right? Yeah, you've convinced me enough. So I, I did order one. It's, uh, it's hopefully going to arrive in the next week or so. So yeah, I'd end up getting the Leatherman Charge, I think is what it's called. So With the big kit. Bit. Yeah, exactly. Okay, yep. cool. Right so, on. Uh, so that's my, yeah. this is my go-to. So none of my accessories are like in order, number one, two, three, that kind of thing. I mean, they're all important. Yeah, but this yep. Leatherman tool uh, never leaves my side. So, sure, absolutely. Cool. So, what's your cool. next one you got on the list there? So yeah, so my next one is the uh, intervalometer. So I don't have one for my Fuji cameras right now, but I do have one for my Canon. I've had it for years, and uh, you know, it's basically got the um, uh, self timer, interval timer, and for me, long exposure timer. Right. So I do a lot of long exposures, and when I'm in bulb mode, if I want to increase the speed or sorry, increase the speed, increase the, the duration. Um, sometimes I do one and a half, four minute long exposures and, and That's I use right, this, yeah. right? So, um, yeah, so for me, it really is not much to say about this guy, but uh, it sure comes in handy. It's remote, it's cable release. So it's, uh, um, you know, my good friend for sure for long exposures. That's for sure. No, understood. I have one myself. So it's, yeah. uh, it's great for, um, for all of it. Um, even just your standard landscape photography stuff too. You always want to get your hands off of, uh, you know, the, um, anytime you're shooting a tripod, right? Yeah. So, uh, a good you're, point. You're not, yeah, you're trying not to shake the camera. So, um, it's good for pretty much anything, right? So, yeah. And before I had that, you know, the, what I ended up having to do was like do the two second timer on, on the camera because I didn't yeah. want to hit the button and, sh and chance at shaking, right? So, that's right. But this that's comes right. in so much handy. It, it's, it's a lot easier to use for sure. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Point? Bear spray. Bear spray. It's a must. Lifesaver. It's a must have. It's a <laughs> lifesaver. Uh, I've never had to use it. Okay. That's a good uh, thing. It is. Um, but it's something I carry year round. Okay. I know bears uh, hibernate. Mm -hmm. um, but bear spray is good for uh, any and all predators. Okay. Sure. Okay? So, um, you know, if I'm using it or if I'm carrying it in the winter time, you know, there's, there's cougars out there, there's wolves out there. And not that I've ever been in a precarious position with any of those types of animals, but, um, I always have it with me and in the winter time, it's inside my jacket. Um, I'm yeah. not really sure as far as this, um, container becoming frozen. Okay. But for myself, I've always mm -hmm. kind of, um, uh, done it that way. Okay. Because it is a propellant, right? But yep. not much to say about it. You know, just make sure uh, that you, you follow the expiry date. Um, it's usually on the bottom here. Right. And uh, yep. what, what I do with the expired stuff is um, I go and practice with it in, in the field. So that's a good call. Yeah. Th yeah th I mean, I'll go and I'll just aim at a stump or aim at a tree or just something just so I get an idea of how to uh, the, the propellant comes out. Right. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Make sure you're shooting yeah. downwind. Okay. <laughs> it's not blowing back into your face. Oh, uh, I tell you, I've done it before where there was little to no wind. Okay. And I fired the, the spray off and just the fumes rising. Okay. Oh, the you're getting that, eh? I started to feel it on my lips and my eyes and stuff. Wow. So I couldn't imagine being blasted with this. Okay. Jeez. And I was talking to a, a bear spray um, supplier okay, and it's not so much that the propellant goes out of date or it doesn't become as effective anymore after a couple of years, but it's the, the mechanical components. It's the seals. The oh, seals will dry okay. up the O-rings. Yeah. Oh, so I didn't know that. Could, okay. Yeah. You could have a dud um, when you're out there. So that's why they suggest, you know, I think it's good every two years or something for a couple of years, every two years, you should change it out. So just follow yep. the expiry date on the bottom. Um, and uh, yeah. If everybody doesn't know, it is a weapon, right? So you actually have to sign, you know, when you purchase it, you got to fill out the forms and all that kind of thing, right? So that's right. Um, yeah. And the other thing is there's been numerous times I've been hiking and hey, you're not, you're not carrying bear spray. Yeah, I got bear spray. It's in my bag. Okay, well, what's yeah. that going to do if the bear comes at you right hey. now? You know, sit down, grab it That's out of your right. bag, and right. So carry it on That's you. Right. I think you can, you have a little uh, sleeve or something for it, don't you? Yeah. So I, I've got it in a case here, and I've got a uh, a carabiner attached to the side. So I mean, I could put it through a belt loop, 
but sometimes I'll carry this up on here on, uh, on my pack, right up, up high, yep. or I'll carry it on the front part of my belt. I don't have it behind me or anything else. So it's got to be nice. accessible. And I'm glad you're bringing the, this stuff up. And when I'm in the vicinity of a bear, like when I've made contact with the bear, it's actually open. You know what I mean? It's okay. kind of ready to go. Yep. I don't have the clip off yet. The safety. Okay. I was going to ask but, you, you just but, keep the safety. On. Yeah, not yet. But I mean, if things start to get dicey, which yeah. they never do. Okay. Sure. But um, uh, I'll just, I'll just be ready anyways. Okay. Mm-hmm. In all the years I've been doing this, um, I've never had a situation where um, I've had to use bear spray. So well, that's knock on wood uh, and, and it's, it's better safe than sorry. Right. Yeah. So absolutely absolutely so so oh. that's what i got for bear spray what's Perfect. next for you uh next for me um yes hey we both carry tripods and we'll talk about that in future episodes but i carry a lot of uh uh smaller littler cameras or even my mirrorless um so so i have a, a mini what they call it, it's a really right stuff pocket pod so it's a mini tripod and it's super oh, yeah. super small mm-hmm. um and it gets very flat so i, do, I like to do time lapses and all that so um, it, it pretty much gets within like half an inch of the ground. So it's, it's pretty tiny. It's super sturdy. It can actually handle my DSLR if I hook it up to it. Right. So it, it's, it's okay, really, cool. really strong. Um, yeah. you're clicking there, but yeah, so it's, 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 I use it quite a bit for time lapses and all that, or mirrorless or even long exposure. If I just, if, if I go traveling, for example, um, sometimes I don't bring my big tripod on the plane or whatever. I take this guy yeah. and it's like super sturdy. So I, I yeah. pretty much take this everywhere I go. So. Yeah, cool. a little oh, gimmick thing, but one. it's uh, it's kind of handy. So, no, absolutely. What's next for you? Well, <clears throat> good old set of binoculars. Okay. I mean, pretty much photographing wildlife, and uh, these are a uh, ten times forty-two uh, Bushnell PowerView binoculars. So, um, you know, multi-coated, weatherproof, uh, you know, adjustable eye, like a diopter, but mm-hmm. I mean, nothing nothing special. I mean, there's hundreds of varieties of, tri- or, uh, of um, uh, binoculars out there. So my only suggestion is to, you know, find something that's light enough, something you can uh, carry all day and, and not be bothered by them. And uh, yeah, just uh, have fun. There's a lot of those culvert bears out there, uh, tree trunk elk, um, you know, whatever, yeah. right? That <laughs> you're excited you see it and only to find out it's like <laughs> yeah. a nice big rock it's like driving down the highway there's a big rock on the side of the road right so you think it's yeah. a bear and yeah no exactly so that's it quick and easy set of binoculars nice okay my uh my last one that i've got is um i you know there's been many times that i'm out hiking or whatever and i realize that if i'm by myself nobody knows where i am so I ended up getting a, a Garmin InReach Mini. So I carry that everywhere I go. It's got a carabiner clip as well. Uh, yeah. So it basically, it leaves breadcrumbs where, where I go. So for example, if I'm out in the middle of nowhere and my wife's you know, a little concerned, she can check out the app and know exactly where I'm at if, if, uh, if she needs to. Um, you know, I've even to the point that they've gone skiing in Nikiska and I'm out in the Smith Dorian driving around. And of course, there's no cell service out there. She just messages me through that and uh and, and it, it takes text and say hey, we're done skiing so i just hop back off and you know so it's even handy for, for little things like that right so it's uh no kidding that's uh, awesome but, but it's pretty neat thing it's satellite i mean you know i've heard that all the uh guys that carry that uh, hike you know go up mount everest they there's pretty much 90 percent of them wear these garmin in reach devices yeah, um, makes sense. yeah it totally makes sense and and it's you know bluetooth to my cell phone so i can actually open an app on my cell phone and text, you know, whoever I need to and just say, hey, I'm safe or I'm going to be an extra hour or whatever. Everything's good mm-hmm. kind of thing. And just Bluetooth to the satellite device and fires it away. And then I get a response, you know, um, it's a little delayed, but it's hey, it's it's a lifesaver. It's got an SOS button as well if I need to. Um, goes right to, uh, um, you know, to emergencies through Garmin as well. So they'll uh, send somebody nice. out if they need nice. to. So, you know, it's just just a peace of mind, you know. So is there a subscription for this or? There is a subscription. They had three plans, I think. Um, one's like 10 texts a month. One's 40 and one's like unlimited. So it's different costs. I think it's one's, uh, I think it's uh, 20, 1995, I think for the one plan, 44.95 and then 79.95. I think I just have the middle one right now. Um, kind of 40 yeah. texts a month. So I go out and about just in case I need it. Hey, I got it and I'm, and, uh, and I'm there. 
Um, but the cool thing about it is there's a freedom plan. So for example, if I decide, okay, I'm not going anywhere for the next three months, I can just cancel it and then, um, and then pick it back up three months later with just a click of a button on through my, uh, through the dashboard. Oh, that's great. Garmin. So yeah, it's super handy. And, uh, again, just peace of mind, right? It's, it's all about safety and, uh, probably can live without it, but you know, it's just nice having that in the back of my mind that I, if something does happen, it's, it's with me. Cool. Okay. Yeah, well, so. um, my last one is, um, basically rain gear for my camera gear. So I have, um, for the, the 500 and the one DX, uh, I have what's called a hydrophobia 300 to 600. Um, I mean, it's in its case, but basically what it does is it covers the entire lens and camera body. I put my arms in, um, from each side and it's got like a, okay. a plastic, um, rear view, um, on the, um, the rain gear itself. So I can see my controls, Oh, okay. but I've been in torrential downpours with this thing and the camera is a hundred percent dry. Really? So this is also made by think tank, but you can also get these, um, rain sleeves by, uh, Optech, right? Okay. It's basically just a clear bag. Okay. Um, it's got a drawstring that you, you pull up to the front of your, your lens hood. Right. And this goes all the way back over top the, you know, the back portion of the camera. So it slides from the lens back and I think they're two for 10 bucks. Oh, wow. That's not bad. Very, very inexpensive. Yeah. So I've always got one of those in my, my camera bag regardless, but, um, rain, snow, dirt, dust, you know, sure. it just protects your gear from everything, right? So even though even though it's water, some of these the gear and the lenses are, are water resistant. It just helps an extra bit, right? Yeah, just peace of mind. Yeah, you're spending yeah. all that money on lenses and gear. What's ten That's bucks? That's right. right? So. Yeah, exactly. So um, I, I give them out to my my workshop participants sometimes. Uh, you know, if I know it's going to be a rainy weekend, you know that kind of stuff. I always have them with me, right? So yeah, it's good to That's a cool little accessory. So. Absolutely. Perfect. Yeah. So I think we, uh, we nailed it. We got our five in. Yep. We'll talk about our accessories for sure. Be curious what everybody else uh, uses. If there's any other accessories that, uh, we haven't brought up, I'm just, you know, there's so many that, uh, we use other ones as well as, uh, uh, you know, um, for everybody listening here, but those are kind of our five that, uh, we talked about that we tend to use more than others, I guess. Eh? Well, and that's it. Like, for this podcast, I mean, I actually went into my gear bag and just pulled out five yeah. out of a gear bag, right? Okay. <laughs> I know, me too. <laughs> so, there's so much more in there. We could probably do another episode or two naming off, you know, another five or 10, right? Oh, but, for sure. Yeah. I mean, these are, these are, these are the ones that I don't leave a home without, right? Sure. Yeah. So yeah. it's, I think that's what this uh, podcast was geared more towards was, was, our um our must-haves right so yeah absolutely yeah which is why i'm buying a leatherman just like yeah mm. exactly exactly I, I can see exactly. the need right so that there's a it, it's another peace of mind right so That's and right. just handy and to I, have for sure yeah. so and i might actually look into that mini tripod so yeah we'll see yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> yeah, there you go. okay thanks everybody for listening um you know we did cover our, our top fives not necessarily um our only uh, accessories you carry i mean by all means we carry a ton of stuff in the field which oh, um, we sure do well it's almost that boy scout mentality you know yeah be prepared you know, just in case Absolutely. be prepared but um i hope this was helpful and uh, we encourage you guys to send us your um your favorite accessory if we haven't mentioned it already and uh, we'll mention it next time in uh, our podcast yeah we'd love to hear from you everybody thanks for listening bye for now You've been listening to the Nature Photo Guys podcast. If you have any questions, contact us at info at the nature photo guys .ca or message us on Facebook and Instagram at the Nature Photo Guys podcast. Make sure you listen to all our new episodes on www.thenaturephotoguys.ca or visit your major podcast providers, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify. We'll catch you next time on the Nature Photo Guys podcast.